The Sustainable Development Goals were adopted by all Member States of the United Nations in September 2015. They encapsulate a new understanding about what holistic development means, balancing economy, society and the environment. This lecture was written by David Abura, a founding director of Coastal Oceans Research and Development, Indian Ocean, East Africa. It offers an introduction to the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals and explains their relevance and importance in relation to food security and marine ecosystem health in the Western Indian Ocean. Developed through intense negotiations over two to three years, the 17 goals make the aspirations of the United Nations Agenda 2030 more concrete. The SDGs may seem esoteric on first sight, but really they express quite a straightforward narrative or vision of a fair, just and inclusive world that provides for all people into the future. Here is David Abura to tell us more about the importance of SDGs. We need the Sustainable Development Goals because the economic practices we've been using for the last 50 years and longer have led to the situation today, which is where resource use and uh, how we treat the natural environments uh, is causing a lot of degradation and decline in natural systems. The economic practices also have had little regard for environmental sustainability and also for social welfare and equality. And so the goals are intended to redress that imbalance. We can consider SDGs this way. We want to eliminate poverty and hunger in a just, equitable and peaceful world across genders and countries with education, access to clean water and medical services for all, ensuring that our means of production doesn't damage nature on land or in the sea through fair and just employment, minimising climate change and through the complex and multi-scale partnerships it will take to deliver all this. So you can see that the SDGs are relevant to all, from the level of countries in the United Nations to businesses in a national or in our case coastal economy, and to households and families living off the land, sea or in cities. What is special about the SDGs in the Western Indian Ocean is that this is a region uh, with very high levels of poverty in the coastal zone and coastal communities, and so the dependence on ecosystem services or dependence on the natural environment is very high. The SDGs here will be very helpful in ensuring that the rights and the access of local communities to seafood and to ocean resources are maintained and that development, which we desperately need in this region, is done in a way that doesn't uh, cause environmental decline and also doesn't take rights away from people. There is a catch, as it's not a simple matter to achieve all of the goals simultaneously, and if we try and focus on just one or a few, others may be negatively affected. We have to consider trade-offs between the SDGs because that's the reason they were there. Um, you can have, if you try and maximise just one goal, for example food production, which is what humanity has been doing uh, for, for several centuries now, you lead to agricultural and fishing practices that are damaging to the environment. And so the trade-offs between producing food and maintaining a healthy environment are the sorts of things that we need the SDGs are there to help us balance. This highlights a fundamental issue for the SDGs, that there are often trade-offs between the goals. The SDGs are said to be whole and indivisible, meaning that they must be addressed in concert. One cannot focus just on one goal to the exclusion of the others. Let's have a closer look at SDG 14, Life Below Water. The world's oceans, their temperature, chemistry, currents and life, drive global systems that make the Earth habitable for humankind. The importance of SDG 14 is that for the first time, the United Nations, the global governance system for the planet, has had a focus on the oceans, a goal really dedicated to what's happening in the oceans and making sure that that's sustainable and that the ocean resources are not overused and damaged. Of course, understanding all the complex interactions between the SDGs needs accurate information and data. For the marine environment, ensuring a balance between fishing and ocean health requires information from many sources on many factors. So how does the ocean science community attempt to meet this need for the right data? We are much more advanced in doing this now than 10 to 20 years ago, and of course the next decades will see innovations that we can barely even imagine at the moment. But a core of this effort is asking the right questions, identifying the best data to answer them, and then developing the tools to supply that data. 
There is broad agreement consolidating around the identification of key variables, or essential ocean variables, measures of specific aspects of the ocean, such as temperature or plankton biomass, or live coral cover, that are both essential to know and must be measured in standard ways so that data from multiple sources around the world can be aggregated. Essential ocean variables are important because we need data sets covering large areas to support regional ocean governance and global governance of the oceans as well. And the key thing is that the, the variables have to be measured in the same way or in very similar ways across all these different programs and scientists and institutions that collect the data. So the essential ocean variables, for example, in the West Indian Ocean, the key one that we're already measuring is live coral cover on coral reefs. That's been measured the same way for 20 years, really, and reported globally, and for over 40 years with some scientific programs. And so it really, these variables help us to understand and report on the state of our system and respond to changes, to identify when changes are happening uh, and to redress any negative changes. But we also need other data for specific user-defined needs, and often at local or regional scales rather than global. For example, how much fish are in a stock and what is their reproduction and growth? Or, what is the health of coral reefs, seagrasses and mangroves that provide benefits far wider than just food, including for tourism, carbon sequestration and coastal erosion? And how much income and how many jobs are they supporting? Or, what is the risk of an upcoming ocean heat wave or harmful algal bloom? Can we provide an early warning system to put in place responses to limit their impact? As you go through this course, you will see a range of challenges, data services and products, both operational and under development, where ocean scientists are working with stakeholders and governments to identify what the key question or need is in a particular place, and how ocean data services and products can be developed to meet these needs and get us closer to achieving the UN Sustainable Development Goals.